do I regret saying it? I don't regret saying it. <laughs> and and, and uh, I still don't like the guy. Pleased to be joined by a member of both the 92 and 93 World Series Championship teams, uh, pitcher Todd Stottlemyre. Todd, it is always a pleasure for me to get to say hello to you and catch up. Um, I'm sorry it's under these kind of crazy circumstances with what's happening around us in the world. So let me ask you first, how are you and your family doing? So thank goodness we're all healthy, first of all. And, and uh, you know, it's not just a city, a state, or a single country that uh, where there's pressure. It's like literally the world is under pressure. And, and um, you know, who would have realized or known ever that we were so vulnerable as a world um, and, you know, I think there's a lot to learn from this and even trying to define, uh, this coronavirus and the effects that it's going to have, not only on us, um, from a health standpoint, but what's going to happen from a financial standpoint, what's going to happen, you know, people's jobs and, and all of these things. So there is so much, it goes so deep. It's so much more than just saying it's another virus. Blue Jays fans have really enjoyed um, helping to flatten the curve by staying at home and watching these uh, Blue Jays World Series games. And going into game four, let's just set the scene here. The Blue Jays are up two games to one after a pretty decisive game three. So here you are getting your first crack at a World Series game to start in a World Series game. So take us back to the night before, like how anxious were you? What was that like? Did you get much sleep? Well, actually I didn't. And, um, you know, I would, I, you know, I look back on it now and it gives you, you know, of course, when you get away from it and uh, it gives you a great time to reflect. But, uh, you know, I got into a verbal um, media war with the mayor of Philadelphia <laughs> and had spent so much energy answering questions to the media um, where, you know, I walked into um, the pre-game um, um, pre interview you do the day before a start in a World Series. You go in and you speak to the media the day before your start. And I walked in with Howie Starkman and we just got blasted about the mayor said this and the mayor said that. And the mayor, you know, said the Blue Jays are throwing the World Series by starting you. And that's what the mayor said. And he said he could hit you. And I got so emotional and so wrapped up into that conversation that my, my mental war was me against the mayor instead wow. of my mental war and preparation, preparing how to get um, the Philadelphia Phillies hitters out. Todd Stottlemyre on the mound, 11 and 12 during the regular season. By the time I got to the game, mentally, I was emotionally fried because of this ongoing war. And I remember my father said, he said the mayor threw some bait out there and you took it and got so wrapped up into everything but the game. He has considerable talent and it's been frustrating to the Blue Jays that he hasn't put it all together. And, you know, when you look at how I pitched in that game, you know, it was, it was, uh, you know, it was, was not a great performance. <laughs> and, you know, I look back on it, but although it was a, it, it turned out to be an incredible lesson and thank goodness that the lack of my performance and how poor my performance was didn't cost us losing that game, but also didn't cost us losing the series. You know, I was going to ask you about your feud with Mayor Ed Rendell. At the victory rally, I was there. You had some uh, choice words for the mayor of Philadelphia. You actually said, quote, you can kiss my blank. Was that something you had planned on saying? I got one message for the mayor of Philly, and I hope you're out there looking. You can kiss my And that was not like, hey, this is what I'm going to say. And, and, you know, looking back on it, um, even though I wish I wouldn't have said it, um, you know, I don't really have any regrets because of all of the the lessons and the depth of the lessons of that entire situation and really what it meant to me for the rest of my career. But, uh, um, you know, look, and, and it was funny. It was, it was kind of a, 
you know, half the people probably thought like, hey, they liked it. That's cool. They cheered for it. Yeah, they and did. there was probably half of the people were like, wow, you know, I wish we would have, I wish as a player, you know, he had more class. I wish he wouldn't have said that. If I had to choose words today, would I choose them differently? Of course I would choose them. But once again, and even though I would, I learned from it, I reflected from it, even though I look back on it, what would, do I regret saying it? I don't regret saying it. And, and, and uh, I still don't like the guy. <laughs> and I, and I still think, I still think as a mayor, as a city and as a politician, it's like, you know, you should have more class than that. Sure. And, but at the same time, you know, to give it one ounce of my power and, and he basically, because I took the bait, because I got emotionally involved, he began controlling my mindset. And I, and I think that that's the thing that really bothered me was he affected my outcome. And, and I allowed that to happen as a professional athlete. You've played this game, Fuji's fan suit, with a lot of grit and heart and tenacity. And of course, when someone talks about game four of that World Series, they're gonna ask me about the now infamous chin slide. I'm not the first person to ask me about it. I certainly won't be the last. Stottlemyre around second, and he'll try for third after hesitating. Stalker's relay out at third. So what's your thought process? Because you're trying to go from first to third. So take us through that. Yeah, it's kind of funny, actually. Um, so funny now, right? Yeah. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, pregame, you know, we go, we go over all the strengths and weaknesses of the Phillies. And as we were going through the preparation, it was everyone understood that Lenny Dykstra didn't have a good arm. And even though he's a great hitter and, and he was a great center fielder, he didn't have a great arm. So um, the, the approach to the team, not the pitchers, but to the team was that there's potential for any ball hit from gap to gap center field potentially could take an extra base okay. and to be aware of that. So here I am. Robbie Alomar hits the ball up the middle and, and Lenny's coming in on it. And I'm kind of like coasting at this point, kind of jogging um, the last third into second base. And I'm kind of look up and I see him and then it clicks in my mind. He doesn't have a good arm. He's not getting to the ball very fast, knowing a pitcher is on base. And I hit second base and I'm thinking, I got this thing. And of course, I got my jacket. It blows up and, That's right. and, and, and that whole deal. And I was running really, really hard, just not very fast. And, and uh, you know, I just dove in desperation. And obviously, I hadn't been working on my head first slide all year. And I went in first. This is the most aggressive base running by an inexperienced base runner that you will ever see. I mean, I went out for a minute. And I remember the next thing I remember was just kind of standing up and I was dazed. And, and Cito looked at me, and, and I don't remember what he said, but he might have said something like, uh, what are you doing? And I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> well, Todd Stottemar, you are always welcome. Uh, we love it when you come to Toronto and visit us at Rogers Center. Who knows? Maybe you'll make a, a nice appearance down at Dunedin uh, once spring training, fingers crossed, uh, gets going. Thank you. It's always a treat for me to catch up with you. Thank, Thank you for you. doing this. A pleasure. Honored. Thank you. Hello, Canada.